In the face of the changing film industry, it's nice to know the action genre is alive and well. From long-awaited legacy sequels to pleasantly surprising takes on classic tropes, these are the best action movies of 2024. It will forever remain one of the greatest cinematic tragedies of 2024, the Furiosa a Mad Max saga bombed at the box office. The film deserved so much better as a worthy prequel to the still classic Mad Max Fury Road. This time around, audiences get to see the origin story of Furiosa, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, as she's taken away from a life of abundance and must fend for herself in the post-apocalyptic wasteland. This includes proving herself to the warlord Amorton Joe and seeking revenge against Dementus, played by Chris Hemsworth, in one of the most unique villain performances of the year. I want them back! That's exactly how I felt. My own family, my own magnificent beauties, taken so unjustly. While Furiosa clearly owes a lot to Fury Road, there are some distinct differences. Fury Road offers mile-a-minute action, with much of the movie devoted to one exceptionally long car chase. Furiosa leans more into being a character study, providing insight into Furiosa's psyche and how she just wants to get back to the life she once had. Through all this, there are plenty of epic set pieces that will excite any Mad Max fan. From the attack on the war rig to Furiosa's escape from the bullet farm, director George Miller proved he still has it in him to make it epic. Beginning with 2011's Rise of the Planets of the Apes, the rebooted Planets of the Apes saga is one of the most underrated film series of the 21st century. However, the story of ape leader Caesar ended with 2017's War for the Planets of the Apes, and there was certainly a lot riding on a follow-up. Luckily, Kingdom of the Planets of the Apes not only offers epic action, but thoughtful commentary on how mythology and religion can become bastardized by those wishing to use it for their own nefarious means. Kingdom takes place many generations after Caesar's death. So our hero this time around is young Noah, who comes into conflict with the tyrannical bonobo Proximus Caesar. Each has very different visions for the future of ape kind and their relationship with the remaining humans. There are more like you. There used to be more. The film functions as a fascinating epilogue to the previous trilogy, while setting the stage for even more stories to be told before the franchise catches up with the events of the original Planet of the Apes. The ending of Kingdom of the Planets of the Apes questions whether apes and humans can live harmoniously. And if all parties aren't careful, both camps may head for yet another war. The Fall Guy was always set to be something special, judging by the marketing campaign alone, which heavily emphasized the often overlooked aspect of stunt work on major blockbusters. At least the Fall Guy finally gives these amazing performers the spotlight with the story of stuntman Colt Seavers, who gets wrapped up in a major entertainment conspiracy where it's up to him to save the day and romantically reconnect with his film's director. Save Jodie's movie, and maybe you get the love of your life back. There's just something to be said for practical effects, and since the Fall Guy includes several scenes that take place on a movie set, audiences get to see the action in real time. While it's always fun to see Gosling crack jokes, it's equally fascinating to watch the long sequences where we just get to see stunts play out, such as Gosling's character continually being set on fire and flung against a big rock. It truly shows how demanding this work is, with the stunt team often doing the same things repeatedly until the take is just right. The Fall Guy ranks up there with Furiosa as far as the year's box office bombs go, but we hope this is one film that gets more love over time. Anyone interested in seeing the best of what the action genre has to offer should expand their horizons beyond American productions. Bollywood and Tollywood have frequently become the go-to destinations for inventive action flicks, as evidenced by the immensely popular 2022 film RRR, and this year brought something special for fans with Kill, a brutal film that sees its protagonist Amrit get on a train to try to prevent the love of his life from marrying another man. However, during his train ride to the wedding, a gang of bandits takes over, forcing the former commander of the Indian Army to stop their reign of terror. If you thought John Wick was deadly with a pencil, just get a load of Amrit with a fire extinguisher. This is a movie that continually finds ways to ramp up the brutality, with the second half of the film having some of the best fights of any recent movie. While an English-language remake is already in the works from the producers of John Wick, we highly recommend giving subtitles a chance and checking out the original before the remake comes around. Given Dev Patel's previous credits like Slumdog Millionaire and The Newsroom, it's understandable if general audiences didn't expect him to make one of the best action films of 2024. Patel stars in and makes his feature-length directorial debut with Monkey Man, 
a movie about a man who comes from nothing and competes in underground fights. He soon takes his grievances with society to the upper class, enacting vengeance on those who have taken so much from the lower rungs of Indian society. Introducing the film at South by Southwest, Patel spoke about wanting to make a real thinking man's action flick. He said, I wanted to give it real soul, real trauma, real pain, and you guys deserve that. And I wanted to infuse it with a little bit of culture. Monkey Man explores the idea of religious nationalism taking over a country's politics, but that doesn't mean Patel slouched on the fight. The movie also suggests that sometimes violence is necessary, but requires support from a community to be the most effective. Whether you care about international politics or just want to see one of the most devastating fist fights in recent memory, Monkey Man is for you. Put it on the monkey. It's pretty incredible to think that, at one point, Frank Herbert's Doom was considered unadaptable to film. David Lynch admirably tried in the 1980s to little acclaim, but Denis Villeneuve has now directed two epic science fiction movies that amazingly capture the essence of Herbert's work. From the beginning, it's apparent the sequel will be something awe-inspiring, as enemy forces fly into the air to locate Paul Atreides but are taken out by Fremen. The rest of the movie follows Paul's rise to galactic supremacy as he becomes a messiah for the Fremen and ruler of Arrakis. When people think of great action movies, practical effects and physical fights may often come to mind. Doom Part 2 has some hand-to-hand -hand combat, particularly the emotional final battle between Paul and Fade Rotha, but the visual effects are genuinely astounding. From attacking Harkonnen ships to Paul riding a massive sandworm, Herbert's world has been brought to breathtaking life. Villeneuve has already expressed his desire to adapt Dune Messiah, but unlike Dune, that book has more political intrigue than outright action. Given what Villeneuve has accomplished already, it's likely that a Messiah movie will still entrance audiences, with or without amazing battles. The Marvel Cinematic Universe only has one 2024 film entry, but the company definitely made it count. Deadpool and Wolverine is a billion-dollar grossing fan-favorite flick that sees Deadpool team up with a Wolverine variant to save his own universe. Along the way, there are numerous epic cameos and naughty jokes that fans of the Merc with a Mouth have come to expect. And when it comes to the copious fight scenes, a killer needle drop is the name of the game. Things kick off with Wade Wilson murdering a team of TVA agents or busting a move to end things bye bye bye. A juxtaposition between poppy song choices and bloody action is a recurring theme throughout the movie as Deadpool and Wolverine duke it out in a Honda Odyssey to You're the One That I Want from Greece, and the whole story culminates with the duo taking on the Deadpool core, or Madonna's Like a Prayer Place. These fights are an ideal encapsulation of who Deadpool is as a character, silly and ruthless at the same time. Deadpool and Wolverine is truly a love letter to anyone who's kept up with superhero movies over the last 25 years, and at this point, Reynolds and Jackman will probably play these characters until they're both 90. Let's Go! Let's f go. Madong Sok proved he could kick butt in Train to Busan, which helped him attain leading man status in future South Korean productions. His latest is Badland Hunters, the sequel to 2023's Concrete Utopia, in which an earthquake devastates Seoul and turns it into a lawless society. Badland Hunters takes place several years after that initial earthquake, with Mars character and other survivors trying to make peaceful lives for themselves. However, all of that is thrown into turmoil when one of their own is kidnapped as part of horrific scientific experiments. Rescuing someone who's been kidnapped is as basic as it comes for action movie plots. However, the thing that sets Badland Hunters apart is that it leans into sci-fi and horror elements as well as B-movie sensibilities. There's an array of fighting styles on display to differentiate the set pieces, but some of the best scenes come from Ma Dong Sok simply barreling his way through combatants with his fists. With Concrete Utopia and Badland Hunters coming out in quick succession, one can imagine even more stories being told in this universe. It's always a pleasant surprise when a legacy sequel to a beloved film from decades ago actually turns out to be good. 1996's Twister is a solid disaster movie following a group of storm chasers, and Twisters pretty much does the same thing for modern sensibilities. The film follows Kate, who's trying to right some wrongs from the past, as she initially butts heads with a group of YouTuber storm chasers led by Glenn Powell's Tyler, before ultimately teaming up with them. Hillbillies with a YouTube channel. Strong enemies proficient in martial arts can certainly make for engaging foes. However, it's another thing entirely to go toe to toe with Mother Nature, and Twisters has some spectacular VFX to show off the visceral carnage caused by tornadoes. At first, it may seem like there's nothing to do but drive as fast as you can from the wind, but Kate has some tricks up her sleeve. Much like Top Gun Maverick, 
Twisters harkens back to simpler times of blockbuster entertainment before cinematic universes ran rampant. Granted, Twisters is a sequel based on pre-existing intellectual property, so it's not like it's a completely original idea. But given how well Twisters did at the box office, it's a good reminder that you don't always need a superhero to sell tickets. Sometimes you just need a cocky lead in a cowboy hat. Twilight of the Warriors Walled In draws from the history of Hong Kong and its infamous Kowloon Walled City. Within that historical setting are some of the best fight scenes of the year, as the protagonist seeks refuge in the crime-ridden enclave but soon triggers an all-out gang war between those inside and outside the city. Walled In draws heavily from Bruce Lee films of the past, but director Soi Chong told The Hollywood Reporter that he also kept one eye toward the future. He explained, I hope to see a new generation of filmmakers take Hong Kong action cinema forward in innovative ways. Rather than simply relying on nostalgia, it's important for these new voices to bring fresh perspectives and reinterpret the genre for a new era. The fight choreography is second to none, with the bus fight in particular needing to be seen to be believed. Granted, bus fights are nothing new to the action genre, but this one's truly something special. Plus, Walden fans should be pleased to hear that both a prequel and sequel are in the works. So expect more martial arts-infused fights in the near future. Alien Romulus has been a solid hit with audiences, and it would be easy to credit this success to its various easter eggs, small details, and references to past Alien movies. However, Romulus manages to stand on its own with some truly inventive set pieces that provide for both ample horror and action. The setup harkens back to the original Alien, as a group of young folks venture to an abandoned space station to get the equipment they need to start new, better lives elsewhere. Unfortunately, there are facehuggers and xenomorphs waiting for them, and not everyone makes it out alive. The setup may be more akin to Alien, but one sequence calls to mind the more action-oriented Aliens, when Rain gets hold of a pulse rifle to do some serious damage to the xenomorphs, and that's even before the ludicrously amazing final act. Alien wouldn't be much of a franchise if every single character got killed by a creature without much of a fight. Rain follows in a long line of superb alien heroines who know how to fight back and ramp up the already mounting tension.